Yeah. yeah. Well, I hit a flatbed tow truck. Imagine if it was a, a, a minivan, you know, full of kids. I'd be in the dead of house of correction right now. Every day, thinking, you know, you should have just got clean soon. You should have just got clean soon. You shouldn't have done those drugs. You know, I lucked out. You know, I really did. And, uh, you know, today I have a good life. And, um, you know, I, don't, I no longer have the desire to do alcohol and drugs. People counseled me. People showed me how to live. People showed me how to deal with those negative emotions that I could never deal with. Those same circumstances, take the drugs out of the equation. Those same circumstances that used to baffle me, that used to run me into depression, that used to cause me to have fear, that used to cause me to have resentment, okay? I can handle those with relative ease today. You know what I mean? Through asking for help. So if you're going through something, do not be afraid to ask for help. You are not terminally unique, okay? No one's unique. Everyone has problems. I used to think I was the only one that had a parent that wasn't acting the way a parent should. I used to think I was the only one who got upset because I broke up with my girlfriend. I used to think I was the only one who had fear of what other people thought of me. You know, I used to think I was the only one whose parents split. I used to think I was the only one that ever had a drug problem. All right? You know, people have problems, people struggle, but when you ask for help, and there's a network of people, like, this guy's always been good to me, you know what I mean? He just has. He's been there through my lows and, and through my highs, and he's always been supportive, without enabling, you know, without enabling, you know, and if he knew I was acting like that in high school, he, he probably would have pulled me aside and had many direct conversations with me about how I should be acting how I shouldn't be acting, you know, but I was very stubborn. I knew everything. I knew I had all the answers to life. I knew what life is about. I didn't need the advice of teachers. I didn't need other people's opinions. I had all the answers. I didn't have any answers. I thought I knew way more than I did. Some of you guys are not like that. Some of you guys are probably very open-minded. You, you, know, you take advice. You make good decisions. Some of you guys probably told the line. Some of you guys probably make terrible decisions. You know? And, um... Just asking for help is a big deal, you know, and uh, someone said, asked me earlier that, hey, how do you forgive someone who's an addict or an alcoholic in your family? And the best advice I can give for that is you cannot personalize it. You cannot make it about you. I used to look at my dad and his problems and say, poor me. What about my money to go to college? What about my money to, to buy nice things? What about the things that I need? You're not there for me. I had to start looking at him as a human being. Not as my dad, but as a person. And every person has flaws. Nobody's perfect. I had to stop being resentful at him, and I had to start looking at him the same way that I look at someone who has cancer. My aunt died of cancer, I think, 10 months after my dad died. Okay? She was our neighbor. I never looked at my aunt once and said, she's the biggest bad person in the world for having cancer. I looked at my dad and thought he was a weak man for being an addict. I have to look at those the same way. And that's where a lot of people go wrong. They say, no, addiction is a choice. You think I made that choice? The drugs are that powerful. I didn't make the choice to do all that. I made the original choice to pick up. But I had no idea that it was going to set me on a vicious cycle of losing everything. You have to look at them like they are a sick cancer patient and have empathy towards them and understand that they're going through an internal struggle. And that's with a lot of things. You know, I realize like when people don't act the way I want them to, I really say, you know what, I'm not going to be resentful at them. They're, they, they're a human being, and just like I've made mistakes, they've made mistakes. And guess who, who benefits the most out of that? Not just them, who benefits the most? Why? Think about it. Someone brought it up. Who benefits the most from not replaying that resentment over and over and over again? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't weigh myself down with all the negatives and the garbage. It's easy to walk around all day and say this stinks, that stinks. Poor me, you know. Oh, life's so unfair, you know. Every time I get, you know, down or I feel like life isn't perfect, I, you know what I think of most of the time? Like someone that's in a wheelchair and has to roll themselves around all the time. You know what I mean? Or, or someone that has, you know, maybe was born and didn't have vision in both eyes, or some, you know, circumstances or people in other countries that that, that struggle to meet the, their basic needs on a daily basis. Things like that. And I start counting my blessings. I start being grateful for what I have instead of consumed with what I don't have and how bad things are going. It's one of the best gifts that recovery has given me is learn how to process resentment, learn how to move past it, and focus on things I should be grateful for rather than always focusing on what's wrong. And you all know someone like that. Some of you guys, how many people you know that's always focused on the negative? Yeah? 
not a fun way to live, is it? How many of you guys go through that? Any of you? You're all perfect, huh? <laughs> no? Good. Then don't ever be that person then. All right? And does anyone have questions? We got a... You got a couple minutes. Questions? Go ahead. Uh, did you smoke weed in high school? Very rarely. Very rarely. You know? I identify as an athlete, so I didn't do it a lot. I ju just drank it, but I, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend it. You know, if you can have fun without any of that crap, have fun. You don't need that stuff to have fun. It's not taking you to the, the, the places you think it's going to take you, you know? Okay, I'm going to stop there. I could elaborate, but, you know. Did your brother get clean? He is in rehab right now at this moment, but he struggled. He struggled a lot. You know, it's, it's tough. You know, he could be doing well. He could not be doing well. I, I, you know, still up in the air. A lot of people die. Do you see addiction as a genetic disorder or mental disorder? I think it's both. You know, on, on my end, I try not to look into that too much. I just try to focus on at what I can do to stay sober. But I think there's definitely a component of genetics because it's in people's families. They say it's a family disease and it runs in families. And there's also a thinking process that goes along with it. You know. The root cause of these problems is often how I feel, okay? And, and when I don't like how I feel, I reach for a solution. And I used to believe the lie that alcohol and drugs are my solution. Now listen, there's some people who are not alcoholics and not drug addicts, okay? And they can drink in safety. Someone who is not has a different reaction when they, when they drink or when they take drugs. So I do believe it. And what convinced me of that, now I ha I've seen it and I've had it, was when I stayed sober for eight months, okay? I stayed sober for eight months, and I stopped working my recovery program. This is back in 2012, and I picked up once. And let me tell you, when I picked up once, my intention was not to redestroy my life. Within two months, okay, I was bottomed out again, and the stuff owned me. So yeah, I do believe it's a, what was it, genetic or in, yeah, I think it's a combination, because it's a thinking disease. What I'm working against right now is the thought process against thinking that, you know, picture this is a beer and this is a drug. I'm working against believing the lie that this is going to be fun and this is going to be fun. I no longer look at an alcoholic beverage or a beer or a joint or a needle or a pill and say, hey, it's going to give me satisfaction, relief, and help quiet my nerves, and it's going to allow me to be more social. I look at those and I see the Pine Street Inn. I see a coffin. I see track marks. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, but I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Some people say it's this. Some people say it's that. I just know it's real. And especially when you're dealing with opiates and prescription medication, the stuff that they're giving you is powerful. Okay, it's more powerful than a, than a lot of other a lot of other drugs. Were you ever able to reconcile any relationships there? Yeah, most of them have been reconciled, and I was very lucky. You know, I secluded myself when I used, but um, you know my. Me and my mom and her family are going on vacation this uh, um, this weekend. I say vacation. We're going away for like two days, but that's a big deal for me. You know, my family went. Our last trip was to Disney when I was like 11. Okay, and uh, we're actually going, going with my mom to California over the summer, which is pretty cool. And we get along great now. It didn't heal overnight, you know. And it was very hard for my first like two or three years going to family events when my dad wasn't there. This is that missing piece. It was very hard to sit down at my dinner table when my father first started using and was kicked out of the house. And it's mom, me, Wade, empty seat. Very emotional, a lot of turbulence. But yeah, most of them have healed. I've been lucky because I had a lot of good people in my life, you know? That's Guys, we're going to run out of time. But I just want to, having known Derek a long time, the amount of courage it takes to get up here in front of a group of people you don't know and talk about your biggest mistakes, the biggest thing, the worst things that have ever happened to you in your own life. We've all made mistakes, but who's willing to stand up in front of a group of people and say, hey, these are mine? His whole sole motivation for that is to help you guys. Because I can show you videos and PowerPoints till the cows come home. This is one of the most powerful things you guys will experience it. And I'm hoping the message rings to you. Okay, do I think everyone in here is a user? No. But if I had looked at Derek, I never in a million years would have guessed the kid that I loved having in class, beating his butt in badminton, and having all that fun times with, I never would have picked that road down with him. Yeah, none of us have wanted to do it.
Sorry. Hey, performance enhancing drugs, man. Test this guy. <laughs> He's like the Lance Armstrong of Batman. I swear to God. Hey, real quick. Why it's easy to share this stuff is because I've learned through this process of seeing what my emotions do. I've learned through relating to other people that we're way more alike than we think. You know, we're all humans. We all have that emotional drive. We all have the needs. We are way more alike than, than we think. You know, I would think differences. We're all humans. We all want to be loved. We all want acceptance. We all want passion. We all want drive. You guys have a great day. Good luck.